Hello everyone, this is Aaron Burton with Unconventional Oil and Gas Training, and thank you for joining me today for a five minute overview of coil tubing activated completion systems. There's two primary ways to complete wells using coil tubing activated completion systems, and the first one we'll look at uses sand jet perforating. We already have our horizontal well drilled in our diagram, and we'll run a string of casing into the well bore. Once that casing gets to the intended depth, then you pump cement around it to provide isolation between your casing and your formation. The cement sets up over time, and once you've pressure tested, then you can move your drilling rig off of location. Now let's zoom in to the toe of the well. We have our casing and our cement providing the isolation, and you go ahead and run your coil tubing into the well bore and with a bottom hole assembly consisting of a sand jet perforator and a coil tubing packer. Once you're ready to begin your frack job, go ahead and set your coil tubing packer, and that'll isolate from anything below you and you pump a mixture of fluid and sand through your cool tubing and out of your sand jet perforator. That perforates through the casing, through the cement, and gives you the access point you need to pump into the formation. So you shut down your cool tubing, you can see the perforations left in the cement and the casing, and then you pump your first stage frack job through the annulus of the casing and the cool tubing out of those perforations and into the first stage. Once you've finished the first stage, you shut down your frack crew, unset your cool tubing packer and then you're able to move up hole. So you pull the cool tubing up hole to the depth of the second stage, reset your packer to isolate from the previously fractured stage, and then you pump the mixture of fluid and sand through the cool tubing out of your sand jet perforator and create the perforations for your second stage frack job. Shut down your cool tubing pumping and then start your fracturing through those perforations and out into the second stage. Unset your packer, and then you're ready to move up hole to the third stage. Reset your packer for isolation, sand jet perforate, and begin your third stage frack job. And then you're just repeating the process from there until all stages in the well have been fractured. The other alternative is using frack sleeves. We've got our horizontal well and list, uh, drawn in the diagram here. We've already got our casing in, and we've got our frack sleeves spaced out on the casing. So once you've got that installed, pump cement around the sleeves to provide isolation. And once the cement is set up, you move your drilling rig off of location. When you're ready to perform the frack job, you run a coil tubing into the well bore. And we have the same exact bottom hole assembly with the sand jet perforator and a coil tubing packer uh, still on the coil tubing. So you locate that assembly in the first stage frack sleeve. And each of the service company's opening mechanisms for the frack sleeves is a little bit different. So for specifics on how to open these frack sleeves, please see your service provider. Overall, though, the functionality is the same. You, you locate your uh, coil tubing assembly in the frack sleeve, and you open the frack sleeve to perform that stage fracturing. You unset your packer, move up the well bore, locate the second sleeve, reset your packer for isolation, open that second stage, stage frack sleeve and perform your second stage frack job. And then you're just repeating the process there, uh, moving up hole to the next sleeve, performing that stage fracture until all the sleeves in the well are fractured. Now one of the unique features here is because you still have that same bottom hole assembly, you do have flexibility to add stages during the frack job. So if you want to add a stage between the third and fourth frack sleeve, you simply move your coil tubing into position between those, set your packer for isolation, sand jet perforate, and fracture uh, in between those sleeves. So it gives you some flexibility to add stages uh, during the frag job. Now let's zoom in and look at a little bit more detail about the fracturing operation. So we discussed that you pump uh, the frack through your annulus between the casing and the cool tubing and out of the frack sleeve ports or the sand jet perforations into the formation. But when you're doing that, you apply pressure against your coil tubing, and it makes it want to collapse the coil tubing. So during the frack job, you're actually going to be pumping at a very, very low rate with clean fluid through your coil tubing and out of your perforator. Now, the primary purpose of that is to apply pressure back against that collapsing pressure and prevent your coil tubing from collapsing. Now, one of the unique benefits of that is that if you do have issues during your frack job, like a screen out, 
then you have the ability to recover from it. So very simply put, a screen out is when you have too high of a concentration of sand that you can no longer physically pump it through the fractures that you've created. So in that case, you you back up your sand and your pressure into your well bore, and by the time you shut down your frac job, you still have sand uh, piled into your casing. To recover from this, you unset your cool tubing packer, and that will give you the ability to move your cool tubing, and then you pump through your cool tubing and out of your sand jet perforator. That way you can circulate out the sand and circulate it back to surface and move on with your fracturing operations. Well, once again, this is Aaron Burton with Unconventional Oil and Gas Training, and thank you for joining me today for a five-minute overview of cool tubing activated completion systems. If you have any questions, please feel free to post on my LinkedIn or Facebook page, or send me an email at the contact information listed here. Once again, thank you, and have a great day.